this fear of suppressing thoughts comes up often like really often there's a common health anxiety fear there that there's something we don't control that is going to disrupt our lives we especially don't want to be the one responsible for causing this thing to happen we fear relapse we fear going back to an experience with mental illness that might have been very traumatic it's understandable it's understandable that we want to do recovery right and perfectly because We've probably struggled with doing compulsions to get things right and perfectly to prevent bad things from happening. So we do it with the mental illness too. It's just another bad thing we don't want to have disrupting our future. But if you're already checking for reassurance about this, you're trying to control this bad thing from happening, well, you've already relapsed. This is a classic cleaning compulsion, trying to clean away the possibility of the bad thing. See, relapse is not that scary. So in this video, we're going to look at, at two things. The first one we're going to look at is why it feels so dangerous to drop the ruminating, to drop the mental compulsions, actually go out there and live our lives. We're going to give some compassion and some understanding to why that's scary. That's going to help us step away from that or step into that fear. The second thing we're going to look at is what to do instead. And that's going to be a big shift. That's going to be about recognizing that the ruminating is the distraction. Living life is not a distraction. It is the goal. It is the destination. And we can be there right now. So first of all, why does it feel so wrong to not do the mental compulsion? A simple answer is that we've been doing them for decades we've come to associate the mental compulsions, the ruminating, the constant problem solving in our heads with safety. It's like there's a little kid up there uh, sucking on their ruminating safety blanket. They're just gonna wanna do it over and over and over again. It doesn't make rational sense that doing the compulsion over and over again is going to prevent the bad thing. Just like if a kid is holding onto a safety blanket, it doesn't rationally make sense that the safety blanket is going to do anything about the problem. But if you take the safety blanket away from the kid, ah, they're going to feel like they're in imminent danger. And that's how we get with problem solving and mental compulsions. Whatever bad thing we're afraid of, if we stop the mental compulsions to our brains, it is though we are causing that bad thing to happen. And after constantly being up here, when we start to drop that intense inward focus and we open ourselves up to the real world and the complexity of that world, we're suddenly aware of so much uncertainty and so many unknowns that we've been ignoring in our, our little world up there. That can initially be very frightening that can feel out of control. We realize how much there is in life that we don't control. That's an amazing opportunity, but at first it'll feel very scary. And so what do we do when we suddenly drop all of those compulsions that were covering up our awareness of the world? We freak out and we turn inward again. We retreat to this house essentially inside of our heads. It's the same thing that happens with any compulsion, if we're walking out of the house, we suddenly notice this uncertainty. Oh, maybe I should just go and check that. I think I left my collection of antique propane canisters on the stove again, and I left the stove on high. I've got to go check it. And we go back inside. We go back inside to what's safe. We go back inside to checking our fears. We go back to thinking because we are really good at thinking over and over and over and over again trying to check and control in a very small, tiny world rather than stepping into the uncertainty of the real world. So let's talk about what we do instead. What do we do when we start to drop those compulsions and then we feel like we're missing something? It feels like we're ignoring something important and it's going to come back to get us. We live. That's what we're afraid of, right? That something up in our heads is going to disrupt our lives. But if we stop life and put it on hold to go and do these compulsions, to go and fix this thing, to get some kind of right feeling, 
to get permission from our brains before we go out and live our lives. We are creating the very thing we are most afraid of. This is the fear. This is the moment where we get to show the brain, hey, I'm not going to put life on hold for some weird thing in my head. I am not going to let that control me. The thing is, when we stop and we go, ooh, this feels like I'm doing something wrong. I better put life on hold until I can get certainty and control around this. That is the problem. That is the fear. We are, in that case, choosing to disrupt life, to chase some feeling, because there's some random cloud in our heads floating by, and we judged it as wrong, as meaning something about us. This is the most extreme ERP exercise, the most extreme mental health and fitness exercise there will ever be. It is simply to live your life while having any thought or feeling. And sometimes that can feel too easy. Like we shouldn't just be able to go and live our lives. Don't we have to scrub away this feeling perfectly? Don't we have to process absolutely and completely some piece of trauma? Don't we have to do a special magic thing with grief? or with real events that we did or somebody did to us in the past. We're looking for somebody to hand us a ticket and say, here is your ticket. You have permission to enter the theater. You've been hired. Here is your contract to go and live your life now. This is yours. This doorway is yours. This path is yours, but that doesn't exist. You're going to take steps forward and there's going to be a wrong feeling. You're going to take steps forward and your brain is going to be saying, no, 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 we've got to stop and have a debate about this. We've got to have an argument about it. You can't not think about it. And you can give your attention to the real world. I use the verb give there. I think that's one of the key elements of this shift. For me, it really helped to understand it as the shift from getting to giving. When we notice that uncomfortable feeling and we stop to fix it, when we notice those uncertainties in our heads and we stop to get certainty about them, to get control, we are trying to get things. We want to get permission, get control, get certainty, get relief. We're trying to get. If we drop the getting and we switch the focus to giving, our focus is on giving to others, our focus is on giving life to ourselves, giving support, giving the things to the people that we care about that we want to give to them. When our focus is on creating and growing, we can practice that with whatever uncertainty the brain is throwing up. And as part of that, we're going to give ourselves trust. We're going to give ourselves trust that if there's some kind of uncertainty that comes up in the future, if there's some kind of difficult experience, if the brain throws up anything, any kind of violent images, any kind of thoughts, any kind of voices, whatever images, whatever physical sensations, whatever experiences we struggled in the past, we're going to give ourselves the trust to handle those, to be curious about them, to apply the skills that we've been learning, and to take those experiences along for the ride of life as we create things and we grow things that we want to see in the world, rather than trying to get things and subtract things which is what the old unhelpful habits were all about. I'm excited to see what you give to the world and what you create. Our brains and the little gremlins in our brains that always want to have debates with us, they've had enough of your time and energy. Now you can give that time and energy to the world. And as you do that, remember, the rumination is the distraction. But after years of practicing that distraction, to turn towards life, to turn towards the real world, uh, yeah, it will feel wrong. But living your life will never be a distraction. It's the practice.